Now this, this is just, it's brilliant. Yeah, guys, it's time to show off some Monarchs, and I have a duel for you, so stay tuned for that. But first, let's go over this deck, because um, I actually took out all the little guys. Uh, I got tired of, you know, just ending my turn after getting impermed or, you know, Valored or Ashed or, you know, whatever. So, you know what? I, I, if I'm going to get Ashed, I would rather the Erebus get Ashed after I Domain Lock, okay? I don't want my turn to just end. So as much as I like these guys and as much as I like the recyclability of Adia, it's just, uh, it hasn't been very practical for me to, to play them. So um, I'm going to get that just out of the way. I'm not playing the little guys. But uh, for the deck profile, 3 Ether, Ether, either way you say it, Either way you say it, <laughs> that joke is so old. But um, uh, this this chick, guys, uh, gets Karaz from your deck. It's like the best move, you know. Uh, I wish you could summon um, Majesty Fiend off of her. That would be even better. But uh, you can summon um, Erebus off of her. So that's pretty sweet. So you get an extra, you know, uh, 2,800 attack going on. And, um, and not to mention if you um, have a domain up and this is tribute summoned, you know, or either of these are tribute summoned, you get, um, you know, that bonus, which is even better. So, of course, I play the basic, you know, six big monarchs. And then I play uh, three Vanities Fiend because uh, this card just auto wins games. I mean, you can have nothing uh, but a Storm Fourth and a Vanities Fiend going second and win. <laughs> I'm not messing with you. Um, and I only play uh, 12. I play just 12 of the big guys. Um, um, I really like three Karaz. I have a different build of this deck without Vanity's Fiend, uh, maxing out on a Majesty's Fiend and Karaz, and I really like that version of the deck as well, but Vanity's Fiend is just so dang strong, guys. Vanity's Fiend wins games on its own. There's a reason why Vanity's Emptiness is banned too, right? It's just it's just way too strong. So, um, one Majesty's Fiend, um, I like this better because, you know, it works with tenacity and stuff. Uh, Vanity's Fiend should have a thousand defense, but it has 1200. It'd be better if it had a thousand. But uh, moving on this is searchable so I only play one of it um, Karaz I really really like but I only play two of it because um, it's not the best monarch you can't attack the turn you activate its effect but that um, ability to pop and draw not only on bricks you but makes you go um, super plus especially off of the ether um, I play um, three garbage Lord um, and I play two garbage ogre so I'm playing bricks and garbage yeah bricks and garbage <laughs> um, it's just I don't like once again guys I don't want to get impermed and like have my turn end. If I get impermed, I would rather it be on the Erebus after I've already domain locked because it's at a point of, well, out the domain now. And uh, a lot of the time you just you just win. But uh, yeah, I'm playing uh, 17 monsters, which is around about my monster counts uh, back in the day for Monarchs too. I think I was playing like, I don't know, I think it was like 16 or 17 with like three max C back in the day. So that does uh, make a lot of sense for it to be uh, around about the same monster count. Um, I play a uh, Dragonoid Generator though. This uh, gives you, um, you know, tribute fodder and works so well with um, Ether and Karaz. I really, really like this with these cards because I mean, you, you just pop. I mean, you can even pop the Dragonoid Generator and get it off the board. You know what I mean? Its its effect will still go through if you get it off the board, and your your opponent will still get a token. But that's not that big of a deal if you're giving them tokens because I mean, you're playing Domain. They're not going to be able to link off with those tokens anyways, you know what I'm saying? Um, and not only that, but if you're playing against Burning Abyss, uh, you know, they, they, you don't, they don't want those tokens. <laughs> they don't want them because the Burning Abyss monsters will just, uh, you know, just blow up. So, um, for the rest of the non-Monarch spells, though, I play Reasoning. Um, even though I'm not playing the little guys, uh, <laughs> I like Reasoning. It loads up your graveyard, and even if they hit 8, a lot of the time, I want... I want you to call eight. I want Erebus in the grave because I don't have anything to tribute. So like, he tributes seven four. So give me that Erebus. You know what I'm saying? Um, I really like reasoning. It like loads your graveyard. And actually, in the duel I'm about to show you, it, it comes up and loads up the graveyard like really full. And I'm just like, yes. <laughs> um, and then um, foolish burial of goods because um, pantheism's amazing. Um, I really like to recycle Prime though. Like, keep abusing Prime. Um, if uh, like, if I'm not getting the recyclability of um, Adia, um, I want like all the primes in the grave as possible to like live <laughs> or something like that. Um, it's been working out great guys. I don't know. I, I really like the one foolish burial. You can play um, two goods, but I didn't like, you know, seeing, um, you know, multiples of it. And plus you only need to resolve one in a game if, if one at all in a game. 
So, uh, yeah, one is perfect. That's it for the non-monarch uh, spells, though. That's that's how I play. Um, if you don't like reasoning, you can play just regular Foolish Burial for Erebus. But, man, I really I really like reasoning. Reasoning is sick. <laughs> um, and, if, and if reasoning is super sick, you know, with uh, with these guys, too, because, you know, uh, you, you special summon and, uh, gosh, uh, like, there was there is another version of the deck where I'm playing reasoning and one for one for these guys. But uh, I just, man, I don't like it getting impermed and stuff. I really don't. Reasoning is just... It's the spicy tech in any deck though, right? Um, really good stuff. Um, but for the Monarch spells and traps, three domain, three return of the Monarchs. So um, if you guys don't know what this does, um, so this locks your opponent out of their extra deck. If you don't have an extra deck and um, have a tribute summon monster and it gives your uh, uh, tribute summon monsters an attack boost when you attack, not when they're attacked, but when you attack, that is what this does. And you can uh, reduce the level of um, a Monarch in your hand. So uh, that's that's all the all three things that this does. It's really really good. Um, and uh, actually, um, while I'm on the subject of domain, something that came up not too long ago. It's not in the duel that um, I have in this video, but it's something that did come up again after all these years. You can have two domain in hand and a ether, for example, or an Erebus. It doesn't really matter. So uh, let's just say you bricked and you have like uh, like let's just say you have this in your hand. This is your hand. Let's just say this is your hand, right? Did you know you can still normal summon something because you go domain? Activate, domain, activate, and then just normal summon because it's now a level four. You don't get the domain lock, but you did unbrick technically by getting a monster on the board. So, uh, it, I mean, it burned your normal summon and everything, but yeah, um, just I wanted to mention that while while I was on the subject of domain, that uh, you can uh, activate two domain and reduce uh, the level of your of the same monarch and uh, summon it as a level four. Um, it does come up, it will unbrick you, it will make your opponent salty that that works, and that's why I wanted to talk about it. Uh, three monarch storm forth. Um, because uh, you just uh, get rid of your opponent's stuff without targeting and then you Erebus them also without targeting. Oh man, I missed that so much. Uh, three tenacity, guys, three tenacity because um, if you have a monarch in your hand, you search any of these. You search Storm Four to be able to do what I was just what I was just talking about. Domain to be able to domain lock them. Return to be able to go plus more. But usually, um, I search a Pantheism or Prime <laughs> just to be able to draw more. This card is amazing. It's a great draw card, and it you know banishes itself uh, from the graveyard. Then you reveal uh, three monarch spells and traps. Your opponent adds one, and uh, yeah, you just keep going. So uh, I mean, these two cards together, I, I max out on both of these because I like to abuse Prime to live but I also like to draw both of these in opening hand as often as I can guys or at least like a tenacity like I want to open up like one of these in a tenacity or both of these or like you know what I mean like something to get this combo off you want this combo off you really do um, it's it's really I mean you, you draw two and then Add one, and then I mean, if you if you have to like just reveal three tenacity, add like a storm fourth or whatever. Now you have like this in the grave, and then just banish you know the tenacity, and you have prime. Like I love this deck so much. I missed it. Oh my god! Like back in the day, guys, if I wanted like free cards from locals, I would show up with my monarch deck because it was just it was not only blinged out. I mean, I still got to you know finish blinging it out a little bit, but you know uh, I still have like my uh, my OTS uh, prime monarch. Uh, uh, domains, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and I like, I mean, if basically if I bricked, I had uh, Max C was at three at the time. So if I bricked or if you veilered me, I still had Max C because Max C was at three. And that's what monarchs were like. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was the best format. That was the last good Yu Gi Oh format. Fight me. Now to the side deck. I'm um, three Nibiru because this wrecks your opponent <laughs> and uh, gives you something to be able to tribute. So there's not really much complaining to be done here. Um, it's a hand trap during your opponent's turn. It basically ends their turn a lot of the time. Um, and then uh, that token you give them, you don't really care about. And then the Nibiru is on your side of the field, and you, I mean you're, you're good. I don't. This this card's self-explanatory. Um, I play uh, the Cyframe package, um, and even drawing the the driver isn't that big of a deal. So it makes me want to play like two driver just in case I draw, I draw the driver. But the goal is not to draw it, even if you do draw both of them though like you can still activate this and but what I'm saying is if you uh, don't draw this but you draw this it's still not that bad because you contribute summon for this and have domain lock with it so um, I just uh 
I play these because it's it's just it, it, during your turn it protects you and it gives you material to uh, tribute summon. Very very good stuff. Um, two Jinzo for stuff like I don't know Paleo for stuff like Alter guys. I don't know. Just Jinzo's uh, Jinzo. Um, I would play three of it, but I had to make room uh, because Dark Ruler No More is really 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 good. And like, man, sometimes I get worried about Mystic Mind, but nobody plays that trash. Like I at least I hope not. But people will keep telling me to play a D Barrier. It's really good. Um, I do like it. I have uh, resolved this. Like so, when uh, during uh, the uh, Marcher, you know, Link Cross combo stuff, uh, when they make Link Cross and like after they get rid of their Needle Fiber and like you know fill their board with tokens, just like D Barrier them. <laughs> the Call Synchro. <laughs> Because the uh, the link cross tokens can't be used for a link summon, and uh, but they can't you know you always use them for a synchro summon. But if you call a synchro a D barrier, they're like uh, and their boards filled up. So um, it does work. Um, I will say if you're worried about back row, play like you know a harpy's feather duster, play um, you know uh, heavy storm duster, something. Um, I'm more aimed at just wrecking uh, decks that aren't I don't know aren't mystic mind I suppose. And like when it comes to like back row decks, like I just Jinzo them, just storm for Jinzo. Uh, what are they gonna do? You know what I mean? They have to have Solemn at that point for the Jinzo, and if they Solemn, then uh, they just paid half their life points, and your monsters are really big, and you're gonna win. So guys, this might be the quickest deck profile I've ever done. This might be the quickest I've ever explained cards. It's because I'm super excited that Monarchs are back. <laughs> Like, I'm so stoked. I played this deck so much back in the day. And, um, I don't know, man. A D barrier, it, it, it's good, but it could, you know, once again, it could be cut. You can call fusion with it and wreck people. Uh, usually you call synchro with it. And, you know what I mean? If you know you're going first. Dark Ruler No More is really good um, when you're going second and they already have, like, established boards because you just uh, turn off all their stuff and, like, storm forth them or something, <laughs> I don't know, like, you, you turn off all their stuff and storm, yeah, that's exactly what you do, you turn off all their stuff and storm forth them so that they can't negate your storm forth, and then storm forth doesn't target, so you just, yeah, that's, that's what you do, that's something like that, <laughs> but that is the whole side deck, and once again, this is probably the most questionable one, but it will wreck people if you know you're going first, uh, this one I don't always max out on, but it does wreck people when you know you're going second, and then this, um, just, uh, protects you during your turn, um, when they already have their board set up let's just say like i'll side night beers like it's combo decks uh side in like i don't know i don't side in like all of this but like usually like these seven uh, you can take out the garbage lords or whatever you want because these are going to be tribute fodder if your opponent is uh, playing a combo deck um i mean if you know your opponent's going to be special summoning a million times you don't need Garbage Lord, you just you replace it with this, and if you know you're going second. Um, that's where the, the side deck, when it comes to the side deck, guys, um, it's pretty uh, dependent on whether you know you're going first or second. Um, I can't really explain that to you, that's just something you're going to have to learn. I'm so excited about this deck. I know it's been back for a little bit, but um, this, is, I mean, this is the first time I've rebuilt it. This is the first time I've shown it on the channel since it's been back. So feel free to use this deck as a template to make some changes to it, make it your own, all that good stuff but now let's show the deck in action and let's show it kick some Shadal ass. All right, so I actually lost the die roll and I will be going second, but that's not that big of a deal because we have Stormforth, we have Erebus. Ooh, man, I roasted Konami for not unlocking Monarchs. And then the very next list, look what we get. Ooh, we get Pantheism unlocked and all kinds of stuff. Man, ugh, I got powers. Anyways, <laughs> so um, Coop ends with that Falco set. He ends with a cross sheep. Um, and I activated Stormforth and he's like, uh, yeah. so speak of the devil, Monarchs. Stormforth. Uh, yeah, that card is not really fair. It's not targeting. It's not like Soul Exchange where, you know, you target an opponent's monster and, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't, doesn't really care. <laughs> um, it just, uh, it just tributes. It just gets rid of something. It's a non-targeting removal. Uh, you tribute your opponent's monster and then you do nasty stuff like I just did, uh, get out, uh, Vanity's Fiend. And now they can't special summon. Yeah, that's not, that's not, that's not very fair. And, um, so, when it comes to uh, Fairy Tail Luna on uh, Coop's side of the board here, uh, Fairy Tail Luna is a it's a great card. You know, it's a great card and Shadals and stuff like that. But um, against this deck, it's it's not very good, especially if I have Erebus up. You know, and he's trying to get rid of Erebus because I could just send another Erebus, and Erebus has a grave effect. Um, but Luna against um, you know um, decks that actually play an extra deck, <laughs> very very good card. Uh, monarchs just uh, you, man, you just don't really care when you play monarchs, huh? You you domain lock them and you 
just uh, beat them to death. That's what I really like. I mean, there's some technical plays with the deck, but um, and and uh, you know one does come up a little later, but uh, it's it's really just um, a lockout lockout uh, beatdown deck. So um, and Luna is really good with the kaiju's as as you just saw. Um, you know he j he uh, jizzed on he jizzed away my uh, uh, <laughs> my uh, domain lock and then he uh, bounced uh, you know the Jizakiru back to his hand. So that's pretty good. I get out another Erebus though. Um, I'm just gonna keep digging in. Uh, just I'm, I'm gonna keep going. Um, activate uh, you know pantheism uh, reveal three uh, get yeah I mean just get storm forth to my hand and stuff and that's what like so when you've already activated storm forth uh, something that people will do is add another storm forth to your hand when you reveal storm forth and that's exactly what I want you know um, and uh, just a second ago I could have gotten more damage in uh, that's why I did this I was like yeah I I could have gotten more damage in um, I, I messed up <laughs> but like as uh, if you read a domain it gives your monarchs um, you know uh, an attack boost when they attack so I've I could have attacked into his monster and got a boost and uh, right here um, I ether and I'm explaining why and this is the technical move I was talking about a little bit ago I was explaining why um, his uh, El Shadal fusion is not gonna resolve because I have a tribute summoned monster and uh, He's thinking on that and he's like, yeah, you know what? I don't want to play anymore <laughs> So, yeah, guys, um, uh, I went, um, what, it was like, so it'd be El Shadal Fusion, Chain Link 1, and then I went, what, Ether, Chain Link 2, um, Storm 4, Chain Link 3. Yeah, just really, really gross stuff. <laughs> um, he didn't really, uh, you know, uh, he didn't really have a chance after that, you know. Storm Forth is, uh, you know, non-targeting. Um, he got rid of a, you know, he got, he cleared his board, so I had to tri tribute my own stuff, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, the domain domain lock is, it's nasty, it's nasty, and um, I was explaining this in the deck profile, but, like, I focus more on getting the domain lock than I, you know, do on the little guys, you know. I'd rather consistently get the little guys and uh, play Karaz, like right here. For consistency, I pop my own Pantheism. I didn't have a target for Pantheism in hand, set my own Pantheism, Karaz, draw, unbrick, get the domain lock here. Um, if I do remember, I think I do get the domain, yeah, get the domain lock here, boom. <laughs> like, Karaz is really good, and it's, uh, that's what I was explaining in the deck profile, is that I want uh, three Karaz sometimes, because, like, right here, I, if I had a third Karaz in deck, I could have sent um, Karaz and uh, dodged Luna, but it doesn't really come up very often. I mean, how many people are playing Luna, you know what I'm saying, uh, for you to want to send a third copy? Uh, usually, two copies of Karaz is fine, because you get it with either anyways, uh, but... Uh, Karaz at three is still very good because I play a Dragonoid Generator and stuff, you know, and you get to uh, draw cards and on bricks. Um, and, and of course, Karaz, I mean, even though you can't uh, attack the turn you use that effect, um, Karaz is still a tribute summon monster. You still domain lock with him. That That's all you really care about is that big attack, 2400 attack, and domain lock. <laughs> And, uh, and that's it. Like, I lose this game too here. I think he summons. Yeah, I'm going to have, like, uh, we, we talked this out. In the, I'm gonna have like 50 life points left, and I'm like, uh, what's the math? Yeah, so it's gonna, I'm gonna have 50 life points left, and I'm like, I bricked anyway, so let's just go. <laughs> yeah, like, I, just, I drew really bad. Like, I mean, um, I unbricked, um, you know, initially with Karaz, which shows off the deck, that's good, um, but uh, he still had a better hand than me. That's all it comes down to. He was able to keep coming, and I just kept, you know, I started to uh, draw bad cards. Um, and uh, he didn't, I uh, mean, exactly draw the best either, but he was still able uh, to, you know, draw better than me, beat me. Um, Foolish Burial Goods, that's where Foolish Burial Goods is really good. It's in Pantheism. Uh, Garbage Lord. And then uh, this is another reason why I play Reasoning right here. <laughs> like, right right there, guys. Uh, see how loaded up my graveyard is? Even though he called the right number, he called eight and hit Erebus. Now, but still, I have an Erebus in the grave. I think I, I do have a Prime in hand, too. I think the third Prime might be in hand or Pantheism's in hand. So I can get it back anyways and get a plus or whatever, but the, the point is, the point is, um, I play reasoning even without the little guys to recycle just because you load your graveyard so much, even if they call the right number. And like, uh, 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 what's, what's the Majesty's Fiend and Vanity's Fiend, those two guys can't be uh, uh, special summoned, so you just, when you hit those, you just keep milling. You just load up your graveyard. Um, I mean, you don't want to lose all your Vanity's Fiends or, or anything like that, but you, you get it. Um, you want to load up the primes in the graveyard and just keep coming with primes because if you have primes you're not gonna die it's 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 just not gonna happen um, and uh, what I uh, opt to do here is I shuffle cards out of his uh, yeah shuffle cards out of his hand uh, just get him out um, he did uh, Lancia me earlier um, so it stalled me out for a turn because I couldn't banish banish pantheism and stuff so that was pretty cool but uh, yeah I'm, I'm gonna win with majesty's fiend and stuff right here 
yeah, not that big of a deal. Monarchs, guys, Monarchs versus Shadal is not the best matchup to show. Um, not the best matchup to use an ex as an example of like peak Monarch, but you know, this was what I was able to record and I did win, so uh, yeah, I'm, and I'm really happy Monarchs are back. I love that deck. It's awesome. Subscribe! <laughs>